Gateway Gamers Podcast. Hi, welcome to the Gateway Gamers Podcast. I'm Brian. And I'm RP. And this is a podcast where a veteran like me introduces the world of gaming to a noob. Like me. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 17 of the Gateway Gamers. Episode 17 of the Gateway Gamers Podcast. I'll try to come with some nice calming energy. <laughs> There's RP for you. Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome. We're well, recording this episode on Black Friday, so that's right. Our Black Friday episode. I am worn out. I am. I shopped till I dropped. No, I did not. I'm just kidding. I worked today. Did you do any shopping online or anything? Yeah, I'm done. I'm done already. Are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they they uh, the way they do this now is it's all week. So yeah. I'm virtually like all, all done. I think I need like one thing. Um, and today it was just, I got, I just finished it. But yeah. How about you? Nah, I got a few games. That's it. <laughs> well, yeah, what games? I oh, remember I sent you the, uh, the Funkoverse Marvel. Yeah, that's a great deal. That was what? 16 bucks. That's the cheapest the, I've seen it. There, there was a lot of games. I almost pulled the trigger on the, um, Mickey and the Beanstalk, even though it's a child game. My niece got that actually. She I did. didn't get to play it yet, but I saw it and I asked her if she enjoyed it. She mm-hmm. said, yes. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. Something. If I ever play it with her, I'll let you know. The setup, I was looking at it. I think you would hate it because it's like an actual beanstalk. Yeah, uh, it's cool though, but you would hate it um, because you hate setting up the bird. I don't box. like those things you have to build all the time because <laughs> I like the birdhouse. I like the birdhouse, <laughs> and I like the tree in Everdell, but it gets wear and tear. Like the more you have to build it up. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Um, anything? Any other games besides the Funko ones? Are you saving? I them got them secret. I got an Everdell expansion. Okay. Just because. Again, it was cheap, and I do enjoy that game, mm-hmm. and I hate the tree. And the expansion that I got, <laughs> Nyx is the tree. Gotcha. So, <laughs> it was a must-buy. Other than that, I haven't really looked around too much at my, anything I need. Mm-hmm. I did buy a game, actually, um, that it's 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 a game of an IP that I, in a weird way, will really like, but also know it's very, I don't know, like, meta is the right word? Like, very self-aware. I bought the Fast and Furious board game. A uh, game about family. It is, it is, you know, <laughs> and we are like family. We are like a family. But we have two friends, I have t- two friends that uh, really are listeners of this podcast, they like this podcast, and they are die-hard Fast and Furious fans, so they have called this game out, and wanting to come on the show since kind of the very beginning, so we'll have to make that happen at some point. Mm-hmm. Well, I know that was during, what, the Target half-off game sale? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... Target's online shopping is frustrating. You have to spend thirty five dollars to get free shipping. Mm-hmm. Being paying for Prime every year, I'm very used to free two day shipping, mm-hmm. and so I just went right over to Amazon. Oh, that's right. Because normally, if it's on sale somewhere else, Amazon will compete and drop it to the same price. They will compete, yeah, and they did. They by fifteen dollars. This is like a thirty five dollar game. Yeah, normally. probably. That's why I've been hesitant on buying it. Yeah, fifteen dollars, um, even if it's garbage yeah. <laughs> 15 dollars. yeah so i'm very curious have not even opened i opened the box that was it um but hoping it's better than the last game i purchased on a deal which was jungle cruise um, oh that's another i haven't played it again it's another uh prospero hall joint so yeah yeah so this one's a funko game but i like the movies i've never re- seen one Really? I've I've maybe watched the first one and i've never watched any of the you others. might have to start i'm gonna i told you i'm gonna binge you don't all have to them. watch one and two. And no, I want to watch them all. I need. Okay. I need all right. them all. Okay. And the spinoffs. They all they all fit into the into the the world. Mm-hmm. They all they're all part of the timeline. To be a real reviewer, I need to watch all the all the movies mm-hmm. so I can see if the theme of the game fits. It's fair. for that's I fair. do it for the fans. I yeah. do it for you guys. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that's re- that's really all I've got any of the good deals there were there were actually a lot of good deals this year yeah i had to hold off i put them on my list mm-hmm. but uh, again this podcast was to play my collection yeah so i'm trying not to add more but mm-hmm. my entire list is games pretty much <laughs> like legos and games fair enough i'm a child i did ask for legos my family asked for a list of some things and mm-hmm. i did ask for some marvel it's hard i never want to put stuff i need yeah i'm gonna put stuff i'm not gonna buy for myself and i want to have fun amen so. amen that is exactly how i feel like i don't know i go and buy stuff for like myself like i don't mm-hmm. i don't ask for like things that i kind of need like mm-hmm. clothes or whatever i want stuff that i don't want to spend my own money yeah. on or that like i treat myself to that's what i want to be gifted or yeah. you know if i get money 
for Christmas. I spend it at least some of it towards mm-hmm. gifting myself a like little. We need bit a crock gift. pot. I'm not gonna ask for a crock pot. Yeah, like, no. I'm not gonna unwrap a crock pot on Christmas. I'll spend my hard work and money to pay for a yeah. crock pot. I want to be gifted a game or something. Yeah, Nerf. Imagine opening <laughs> Nerf gun. A, opening a crock pot on Christmas. <laughs> that's, Dang. that's the end. That's yeah. when you're an adult. <laughs> I'm not ready. Yeah, I'm, I'm fighting that off as long as I can. Yeah. So uh, in my world, I introduced my wife to Wingspan. How'd that go? She didn't like it that much. <laughs> um, she was fine. I think she kind of had the same reaction as you, where at first she was just like, what is happening? Because I tried to go over, we went over the same directions like that you kind of get it by yourself. She's like, I, I think I get it. And then she was having all these birds that weren't, really bouncing off each other too well because okay. i i don't think she fully grasped what was going on mm-hmm. so i was like all right that's the game and she was just like okay <laughs> like I don't, <laughs> she's not a gamer but she'll humor me which i appreciate but i I, I enjoyed it still like i think it's i have the same opinion where it didn't change it's a good game but yeah. it's nothing it was it was easier than i thought to teach her well, like we... now that i really understand it more mm-hmm. yeah i didn't really expect her to love it she doesn't like reading a lot. Like, she likes very... Like, Uno. She just likes quick iconography. Mm-hmm. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. So, like, games like that, like, where you have to read every card and, like, read your hand to kind of, like... I get it. ...work. Like, she's just like, I don't... I'm not having fun. Like, she, that's not fun to her. She hates villainous, right? For that reason? She... Yeah. She's not a huge fan of that one. Yeah. Ding. Take a shot. Yeah. Take a shot. Villainous. Uh, um, consequently, I also introduced our two friends to thanos rising yeah how'd it go it went well so i pulled it out and they were like uh, uh, uh and these are non-gamers non-gamers so okay. uh if you listen to my other podcast previously recorded it was shane and producer nick um and bob but bob's played mm-hmm. with us before uh so i pulled it out i'm like come on let's just give it a try and bob having bob there really helped because he was like no nah, you guys will get it it mm-hmm. seems like a lot it's not and then we started, we went halfway through the round, and we were going to lose to Thanos. So we're like, all right, let's just start over. <laughs> and we got through. We, we still lost to Thanos. But um, Shane was really into it, and so was Nick. And Nick texted me the next day and was like, he's like, man, I woke up and was just like, why didn't we beat Thanos? <laughs> and he's like, I understand why it's so addicting. Mm-hmm. And I'm Is like, Nick yep. a listener? Uh, I sent him this episode. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, I... I um, I thought I think he is sometimes he's an avid listener previously recorded Mm -hmm. obviously as a producer but um, this one I'm not really sure he he definitely did in the beginning but I sent it to him again he's just like nice placement I'm like yeah come on I'm gonna (laughs) teach you how to play this is you learn everything about that you need to know about Thanos Rising but uh, yeah that'll definitely be one on our um, so the previously recorded uh, podcast network's hosting a weekend retreat of some sort so that'll definitely be one that hits the table. Yeah, we'll give away some tickets to some fans. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do a live show. Text in 532 and <laughs> enter to win. Uh, going to do a live show. Just uh, message us Hades and uh, everything will be... Could you imagine? <laughs> Try to get anyone out there. We should, like, come out to this dry county so we can <laughs> board game with you. Come out to Ocean City, the beach town in the winter, and yeah. come see us perform where we're, uh, podcast we're, live where we're able to rent a house out yeah. for like five hundred dollars for a weekend because yep. no one wants it <laughs> yeah nobody's there in the winter time but yeah that's all that's yeah, all that's, that's all that's really new with me yeah that's kind of it with me too i mean just gearing up for the busy that's season it. just gearing up for the holiday it was a struggle to kind of plan out yeah this recording session we almost nixed december yeah. all together well we had like yeah we're gonna hang out today and do it after i'm done work and then i was like no i can't and then i'm like wait i can um, but yeah, there's just, uh, just some transparency with listeners. If we're going to try really hard to either get a full episode out, a solo episode out, mm-hmm. something for your ears every two weeks. But yeah. if, even if we got to zoom it and it's just us yeah. talking about nonsense, but we've been good so far. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, we have been, um, but it's just going to be, it's difficult. You all know out there how the month of December can go. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the darkness, so the darkness of December. Yep. So I figured with today being Black Friday, I figured uh give a little history about Black Friday and its origins. Do you know like the origins of Black Friday or why it has its name? Uh, I do not. So it actually began, it's just real quick. No, <laughs> I do not. <laughs> um, so it actually began in Philadelphia in the 60s, which is some local pride, Philadelphia, woo woo. Yeah. Um, it was when tourists descended the city of Philadelphia for 
the day in between Thanksgiving and the Army Navy football game. Oh yeah, a staple here. So uh, police would call it Black Friday because they couldn't. They had to work basically all day oh. and couldn't take off because because it's so it was crazy just mayhem. Yeah, mm-hmm. so a lot of uh, retailers knew that like shoppers were coming in. People yeah. were in the town, so they would do a lot of sales on that day and yeah. tried to call it uh, something else, like Discount Friday or something. But Probably Black Friday more just, sense. Black Discount. Friday just kind of stuck because they were like, it's kind of negative, and it just yeah, it's like uh, people associate maybe black with like crossing out the the barcode, like you know, like sometimes if you go to like a discount shop, mm-hmm. they'll have like a crossed out and like a sticker. Like okay, black maybe that's why. I yeah, know. I don't know. It just kind of. It, or it's blacked out. Probably because it's blacked out. Like, you can't take that day off. That's yeah, that's how I kind of took it as yeah. on the calendar. So the, they couldn't take off, but it was just like a, a dark day for the cops because they had to yeah. work all day and deal with a bunch of nut so jobs. So Philadelphia is the reason. Actually, the That's Army, one of them. I found like four different origins. The Army the Na- and Navy in Philadelphia are the reason why people have to work through the yeah. holiday. Well, luckily this year, it seems like... Yeah, which is great. Which a is, lot of retailers close because everything's online. Our favorite Target took a stand, and they're saying, no, no our stores aren't going to be open on Thanksgiving, yeah. but our online shop will be, which is good. Yeah. Uh, you, I mean, who really goes? It's crazy. We saw people at GameStop waiting like 11 a.m. yesterday. Well, that might be for a PS5 still. Well, that's what I think it is, which yeah. people have to struggle <laughs> to get it, which is awful. It's all about this damn chip, but as I digress, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's it. That's all. I, I just yeah, figured no, it was like a neat little – there are other – like History Channel – Mm-hmm. Like dot com had like four different origins, but that oh, one well. seemed that's a, that's the one fun. I like. That's we're that's with my that. official yeah, Black that's, Friday. That's origin. the Gateway Gamers uh, official Black Friday story. That is pretty interesting though. Yeah, I just never knew what it was. It was just always Black Friday. There's probably so much crap that started here in Philadelphia that I have no idea because I'm a bad Philadelphian. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's about it. I mean, you ready to uh, drum roll, please? Unveil the game. <laughs> Machi Koro. Machi Koro. Let's see, IDW. Is this a comic book? Nope. It's just IDW Games and Pandasaurus mm. Games. Which, interesting enough, IDW Games is out of business, I think. Oh, really? That's yeah. unfortunate. Yeah, I think they went out this year. Um, All right. So, Machi Koro, what do you get? What's your first impression from the box? Uh, so, this has some Asian culture influences. I mean, there's... Uh, I, I don't want to be ignorant, but either Japanese or Chinese writing on the box. I'm not really sure. Mm-hmm. And it looks like a small Asian town. That's about all I got, I assume. You, you have to build up your town, maybe? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah there you it's go. It's a uh, city building, dice rolling. The thing. box said it all. Yep. Give all me a right. little bit of back of the box. Welcome to the city of Machikoro, the Japanese card game that is sweeping the world. You've just been elected mayor. Congratulations. Unfortunately, the citizens have some pretty big demands. Jobs, a theme park, a couple of cheese factories, and maybe even a radio tower. A tough proposition since the city currently consists of a wheat field, a bakery, and a single die. Armed only with your trusty die and a dream, you must grow Machikoro into the largest city in the region. You will need to collect income from developments, build public works, and steal from your neighbor's coffers. Just make sure they aren't doing the same to you. Machikoro is a fast-paced, light-hearted game for you and up to three friends. Once you've had a taste of Machikoro, this infectiously fun game may have you wondering if the dinner table ever served another purpose other than gaming. That should be our motto. That is. That's a really good one. They say you can't build Rome in a day, but Machikoro will be built in less than 30 minutes. <laughs> I that like was that. the lengthiest yeah. box I've had to read. Oof. That was for a seemingly There's gonna be simple a lot of... game, maybe. <laughs> um, I'll give you some background on Machi Koro. Came out in 2012. Plays for 30 minutes, like I said. Two to four players. Designed by Masio Suganuma. I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. Published by Pandasaurus Games and IDW Games. And like I said, the mechanics are dice rolling and city building. It's basically an engine builder. How'd you come across this game? um target oh you just saw it and picked it up yeah um this was a game that was kind of hot for like a minute okay like a lot of people were talking about it it's like a it's a bright fun game like i did look into it and i enjoyed it 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 is just like a quick light easy game like this is a game that you can sit down with people and just be like hey you're rolling dice maybe a good game for underneath the tree oh you want to go play absolutely And we're back. How are you, sir? How'd you, what'd you think? Give me your first impressions. <laughs> I did not like this game. <laughs> uh, 
it's sure it's luck driven because it's all about dice but it was just like anytime i got something going it was snatched right from under me and i think i don't like those kind of games like the luck based dice rolling of thanos rising i liked okay because we're working together Mm -hmm. working against it it was not an enjoyable experience for me okay um it's a simple it's very simple game it is Uh, so this is like a very gateway gamer game though Mm -hmm. like this i think maybe if this was a game i introduced you in the beginning you might have some different ideas it's possible but you Um, might be a little more advanced you might be too i mean maybe it's a it is it's a very absolutely it's a gateway game um it's very easy to learn we had an issue setting up but uh yeah, it just took, it took longer to set up almost than to play, and it yep. wasn't because it was hard to set up. I was just brain farting. <laughs> uh, but we were. I think it took us ten minutes to play the game. Yeah, ten fifteen. And you ran away with it, and I was just to a point where I couldn't wait till it was done because yeah. I had no ch- I had no chance of coming back. Yeah, I was going to ask you to play again, but I could just I could read yeah, your no. vibe <laughs> that you wanted. So I I do enjoy this game as like a this is a game I'd pull out with like family members like this was a thanksgiving game yeah this is a game where i'm like all right guys crowd around the table let's roll some dice you don't have to think much because yeah. it's not a heavy nope. this would be a game my wife would enjoy because mm-hmm. it's not heavy it's yeah. not you don't have to read the cards that much you just kind of have to pay attention to yeah, what you're that's rolling really and that's it do. yeah yeah we want to explain the gameplay yeah absolutely so as we said machi koro is a town building game so it's all cards each card has a number at the top like two, three, four, up to uh, 12, because you're rolling die. So in the beginning on the setup, you have one wheat field and one, I think it's a bakery. Yeah. Uh, The wheat field is worth one. The bakery is two or three. And you have four establishments that you have to build to end the game. Uh, It's like a TV station, amusement park, a mall, and a train station, I think. Mm-hmm. So after you build, you get enough money to build them, the game's over. Uh, how you get money is, in the beginning, you can only roll one die. The die that you roll, the number, corresponds to your card. So if you roll one and you have a wheat field, the card says gain one coin on your turn. Uh, RP's turn, he rolls. He rolls a two or a three. Uh, he would get uh, one coin because he has the bakery, which is worth two or three. Um, and that's on... Anyone's turn. The, the wheat field is anyone's turn. The, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The ranch was also so that's, turn, yeah. So that is the other thing. There's four different color cards. There's blue, which are like prim- primary industries. All those are attainable no matter who rolls mm-hmm. the die. So if I roll one, RP has our wheat field. He gains a coin as well. Uh, secondary industries are green. They're your turn only. So if I roll two, you don't gain anything. Just mm-hmm. me. Uh, red are like food and restaurants. Those are what you steal from other players. So if RP rolls a three, I have a restaurant. I'm taking his money. So it's basically thematic. I'm, yep. You're coming to my establishment. I'm taking your money. And then purple ones are major establishments um, where you steal from all other players. Yep, that was the and dagger. And those are the ones that I was destroying you with. So because yep. it's, <clears throat> it's a high value, you're taking five coins. Yeah. From me, it's hard to, when. You're playing this game. It's hard to get five coins to begin with, and then like the way I the, the way the dice fell for me. Um, so then you were just yeah, kicking up my legs from out from underneath. Me. For whatever reason, we rolled a bunch of sixes, mm-hmm. and then so I, and then so I, I knew early. I went. I'm just gonna buy a six because that's all we're rolling. And the six that I had was like the stadium where it was steal five coins from another player. Mm-hmm. So I just kept stealing coins from RP. And so then, anytime he started to get ahead. And then I bought a six, and I didn't roll one six. <laughs> I think I rolled it twice. Um, so I was very much... Everybody might have a different experience when playing this game. I was very much over it. Yeah, um, it's a very luck-heavy. It yeah. is. It's a luck-heavy... Yeah. Uh, there's strategy, but not much. Because yeah. you can't strategize... Dice rolls. Because it's dice rolls. It's like, all right, I'm going to buy a bunch of ones. Yeah. You, you might not roll ones. And then eventually when you buy the train station, you can roll two die... Mm-hmm. So you'll start rolling higher numbers. So eventually you're going to stop rolling ones. It's impossible to roll one once you start rolling two die. So again, it's just like you you can plan, but you can't plan too much. Yeah, this is absolutely a gateway game. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's simple. 
Which is yeah. why I think maybe we're both kind of blah about it. I yeah. think we're kind of past these type of games. This is a good family game, like I said, that I would pull out if like her mother in law was like, Oh, like teach us one of those fangled games you have <laughs> I'll it's pull like, this out because she I was texting her when we were playing Wingspan, me and my wife. She's like, Oh, I wanna play that and I was like, There is no way <laughs> that I will get you to play this game. But yeah. Uh yeah, this is a great holiday game. We're around the table after dinner. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you got people over for the holiday great game to get out and just kind of get everybody involved something to do Mm -hmm. not super heavy um the the reason why i think i didn't care for it is because it has nothing to do with like there's no ip but there's no like incentive drive i wasn't interested in building the town kind of maybe that's why uh the theme park game that we played um unfair unfair, or fun fair we played fun fair maybe that didn't click for me as much as well because like i like the idea of thanos rising beating mm-hmm. beating thanos or um, you know like building as much maybe yeah maybe i don't okay um, i know there is an expansion for this that adds more and i i've read that it kind of gets rid of the runaway like mm. mechanic kind of i don't know i never looked into it because this isn't a game that comes out on the table a lot where I was like, oh, I need the expansion. I've never I know, even heard you mention this before. <laughs> yeah, I know currently um, Target has a fifth anniversary edition, which doesn't make sense if this came out in 2012. Maybe it only came in the States recently. Maybe. Yeah, because they have like a fifth anniversary edition, which combines the, the, ex- the expansion with the original, and I think it gets rid of some of the cards. It might get rid of some of those purple cards that maybe ra- we or, ran away with. Or cancel out or something yeah. like that, yeah. Um, and then I know there's a new version coming out called Machi Koro 2, which oh. I don't know much about it, but they kind of announced it recently. And oh, I don't okay. know if it's, for it to be called 2, I don't know if it's literally the same and they add it more, or if it's a totally different game, which is something maybe when it comes out, maybe we'll revisit it. Maybe. And see what the second one's like. <laughs> yeah. Um. So just, I mean, we kind of got that you don't love it from... Yeah. I, kind of bad taste in your mouth, but what do you think, like, visually? Like, what, like... Yeah, visually, it's very cute. It's a very cute game. That's how mm-hmm. I would describe it. I was looking, I was like, oh, this is cute. It's uh, bright. It's, bright. Yeah. Colorful. It, it grabs your attention. It has that style. Um, the box is very, uh, uh like, a. Yeah, I don't know what's, what that would know be what considered. I don't know what to consider that, but it's... It's very Tokyo. Like, it looks yeah, like yes. any Tokyo kind of art style, like, very tunish. Yeah, I think tunish is the way to go, like um on the verge of like a mix between anime and like american cartoons i guess would be a good way to put it yeah uh so it's catching it's very bright um if i walk past this in a store it would definitely i would probably stop and look at the box okay um replayability yeah replayability is through the roof i mean it's a very because of the dice yeah because it's luck i just i personally for the sake of this podcast as a gateway gamer absolutely recommend it if you're more experienced and you're look you're not looking for something simple or just a dice rolling would mm-hmm. not recommend it. Uh, but if you're looking for just something to It's a good holiday game. A holiday game, it, play yeah. with your friends while you're you're hanging out, like nothing serious, perfect game. Yeah, I think this would be a good game to pull out at like a holiday like I said, just Yeah. The table's out. Yeah. You just kinda hey, and, let's play this dice game real quick. You don't have to it's not hard to explain. Yeah. Like we did it I in think three seconds. I think at this point we're on our 17th episode, so I've played almost 17 or more mm-hmm. games. I'm just... That, I think I found what doesn't interest me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you don't like building. You don't like... I uh, don't know if it's the building. I think it's... The, if you didn't run away with it, maybe. But the the runaway factor is just it's the chance of the game. Yeah. I think that just gave me... Well, this game taste. was literally like hidden in the back of my shelf <laughs> where this would have been one of the first games i brought to you because it is such a simple game yeah and I, that just shows the respect that i have for this game like i, I enjoy yeah. this game like i said but this is a such a easy game that yeah. it just kind of got tucked i think if we just would have been the first or second game i'm like oh okay mm-hmm. i get it yeah i like it yeah and i think a, i want to revisit some of the games we play in like a year yeah like but, a, like a year from now if yeah. we're still around, <laughs> we will revisit this game and maybe get have a different opinion. Or I think I said like when you're getting ready to pull a game out of that bag, my mouth is like salivating. I'm very excited to see what you're going to pull out. Mm-hmm. I'm going and I'm waiting like oh I can't wait to dig my teeth into this next Marvel IP. There's nothing, bro. This is a nice change of pace, especially for all of our listeners who maybe 
want to hear something different than a Marvel or a mm-hmm. Disney game. Man, yeah, just from my personal interest, no. Yeah, good game, just not. Good game, just not what I'm looking for. Yeah. Not that I'm not what I'm not interested in. Just not what I'm looking for. I this think... would be a great game that I would play with Audra. Yeah, exactly, and, and yeah. that's why it's so hard to categorize. Like mm-hmm. I think you and I are just too advanced for this game. Yeah, this it's is just, just a good entry level game. Yeah, absolutely. good game. Just that's it. It's just a good game. Yeah, absolutely. Best way to describe it. Best way to describe it. Good holiday game. Okay. That's our Machi Koro. <laughs> Finally, a game that we're just another game that we're just kind of ho hum about, which is always funny because we get people reaching out for that fun fair one. They're like, we really like that one because really? we're not like gushing about a game. Because I mean, you listen to so many podcasts and you're like, oh my god, I love this game. Oh, Even yeah. Wingspan, a lot of people reached out that we weren't like, like raving about it. Really? That it was good. It was a good game. Were yeah. they what do you mean they were reaching out? Like they were saying like on Instagram we're getting messages saying like, hey love the episode like kind of Oh they like that we were they like, like that we weren't yeah like I that like we're it. kind of honest. I was and, being honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean we're not getting paid for this. No, so. no. We're paying for this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh so it's just yeah. I mean like I that's why I bought the Fast and Furious game. I didn't buy Machikora. Like yeah. that's just what interests me. Yeah, um, well, we'll we we'll review that one. <laughs> we'll see what happens. We're not going to need friends for that. We're going to no. need family. No, just family. <laughs> All right. So you want to I got some fun kickstarters. Sure. So let's get into that. So it's time for kick or kickstart it. All right, so first one I have for us is Mindbug. First Contact, which actually the one of the creators of Mindbug reached out to us a long time ago. Oh, yeah? Like kind of before he finalized this game and sent us a link to the print play. So I played this one. Oh, you did? I didn't play the finalized version, but he sent us the print and play like copy, and I did print it out and I played it because this game is also designed by Richard Garfield. Staring at me blankly, which created Magic the Gathering. Oh, that's right, yes. So, once he kind of mentioned that, I was like, all right, let me check this game out. So, Because Richard Garfield has designed not just Magic, but a few other games I like. So, he, Richard Garfield designed this game? He helped design. Helped He's design. one of, like, five designers. Okay. One of them, uh, like I said, is the one who reached out. Because he's a fellow podcaster. His podcast is uh, Nerd Lab Pod, the Nerd Lab podcast, and he does a lot of game design stuff. That's cool. So it's not just reviewing games. He actually talks to game designers. Uh, he actually went into a lot of how he was designing this game. Oh, that's actually really cool. Into this, a lot of the behind the scenes stuff, which is that's, interesting. It's yeah, something that's different. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So he actually reached out to us, uh, like I said, a while ago and gave us the print play. So Mindbug First Contact is currently on Kickstarter for the next. Probably when his podcast comes out, like 15 days. So he's okay. still have some yeah, time. plenty of time, yeah. Um, he needed 5000 He's up to $100,000. Good for him. Back so far, so he's doing well. Uh, Mindbug's interesting because it's only 48 cards. It's a 48-card deck, and that's it. So it's not like Magic where you have to buy a lot more and build your own deck. You play with these 48 cards. Each player draws 10 out of that deck. And they're all like weird monsters, so it, or not monsters, but like weird hybrid creatures, kind of. So it's like a rhinoceros turtle, and like <laughs> just the, the art, the, the design, of the cards are really cool too. They're very like cartoony and vibrant. Mm-hmm. Um, so you draw five cards in your hand, and you have a five card draw pile. Each player gets a mind bug, which is just like this alien creature. And how you play is you just on your turn you play a card, and that's it. Like there's no cost. Like how magic, there's yeah. like mana to draw a card. You just play the card. So the risk of that is if you throw down like a strong card, you can you your opponent can use one of the mind bugs to take that card. Okay. On his field. And what's cool about that is you only have two, so you kinda gotta think like it's a good strategy to kind of think like, all right, he put down a good card. Do I wanna steal it? He might have a better card because there's forty eight cards, there's only twenty that you draw. All right. So you don't know exactly what's coming out. Um and it, that's kind of it. It's head to head. So, like I said, the rhinoceros beetle has like a six at the top. That's his attack power. So you can kind of go, I'm attacking you. Mm-hmm. You have monsters on your side that could defend. There's powers, obviously. Like they all do different things. It is like magic in that sense where there's like poison and like other, there's other things happening. But like I said, I think the basic mechanic of these mind bugs is interesting because yeah. you can be like, nah, that's mine. <laughs> like, yeah, but the strategy of you only have two and you can't get any more makes it interesting. 
Um, it's a cheap entry point, $17. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah back that. <laughs> yeah, I already did. Oh, okay, there you go. Uh, $17 for the base box, just the base box. And that's $29 for the base box and the expansion. That's nothing. Yeah, so I already backed really it. That's really cheap. Yeah, so we're we're getting it. Yeah, when it yeah. comes out, we'll be okay. reviewing. We'll be it for reviewing sure. it then. Yeah. <laughs> um, so but we'll, I just I want to support that one because I think it's that's cool. Yeah, it's, it's a cool awesome. One. When you reached out too. Uh, so yeah, we'll, you reached out a while ago, like early. Even we were still in our infancy. Yeah, kind of so reached out. Kickstarting that one. Kickstarting it already did. And it's, it's called Mind Bug. Mind Bug First Contact. Awesome. Um, another interesting one. I wanted to present to you. So we played Wingspan last week. Uh huh. And it's about birds. Okay. Have you ever wanted to be a bird? No, I can. <laughs> not, I can say matter of factly, no. I've never wanted to. I've wanted to fly, but never be a bird. No, be a bird. So this Kickstarter is called Be be, be Like a Crow. Okay, that's a better name than Be Like a Bird. It's a it's a solo RPG experience where. All you need is a pen and paper, a deck of playing cards, and an imagination to take flight. <laughs> um, it the only thing I don't like is it doesn't really say how you play. <laughs> it just kind of gives an RPG. It just kind of gives a lot of information. And says you just need a deck of cards. Um, it does say there are scenarios that you encounter as a bird. Fair so, enough. Whatever that means. Yeah. Um, the pay-ins like it's like twelve dollars. Oh, okay. Well, for like the print play, I think it's like. 40 if you want like a physical journal well, i'm looking at some of the art that you have pulled up here and it is nice it's very nice looking it's fine but so it justifies just, as 40 bucks I yeah suppose. if you want to be a bird i guess trying to no it's just it's interesting again it's a very niche thing it it's made it's uh i'm never starting to pick did it make it's it yeah it's well past it oh well, so i mean people that. are interested yeah and it is a cheap price point so do you want to be a bird no i don't I don't want to be a crow. You don't want to be a crow. Uh, so I'd rather doing? be a mind bug. What are you doing with that one? No, kick kick it. Not trying to poo-poo, <laughs> but it's just that. I... That one just, it jumped to me. I mean, it was just like, oh, be like a crow. What's this? <laughs> and, I, and like I said, if I think if I had. Well, you know what? I It's a game I didn't come up with. I didn't, an idea I never thought of. And it, the only reason I'm not like super jazzed about it is like, it doesn't have like a video. Like usually on Kickstarter it has like a video like explaining it kind of how you play it just says like you need a deck of cards but it doesn't really say like what do i do with this deck right. of cards like if i draw six of hearts but is it's, that affecting... it's interesting that it's backed without really explaining the game i mean there is a lot of information but just not the gameplay and people want to be birds so i don't know but just... i guess all right well yeah. coming off the 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 wings of wingspan I so guess. what are you doing with that one kick it i'm sorry unfortunately <laughs> i'm kicking it <laughs> Well, I already, I already kicked it. And I kickstarted. You kickstarted it? No. Oh, God. As much as I love Solo. Um, uh, next one uh-huh. is a Kickstarter announcement. Oh, okay. I don't have an exact time when it's starting, but have you ever heard of Zombie Side? Oh, yes, I have. <laughs> yes, I have. So I sent you this one because um, I'm on the fence with yeah. this one. So Simon and Spin Master have officially announced that Marvel heroes are coming to zombie side mm-hmm. which is a game i knew nothing about uh, until we just talked about it a little bit ago yeah like so zombie side is a game a game that i kind of wanted to get but it's it's a pricey one it's like a hundred bucks but again as you know from the marvel united simon produces wonderful figures yes so that's what this game kind of is it's a minis skirmish game where you get a big map um you have a group of survivors and then you explore the map to get items, weapons, and you basically fight off zombies. Like mm-hmm. the little zombie miniatures as you're going, zombie miniatures will start coming out. Um, so it's like a survival. Like you have to find guns, you have to find ammo, you run out, that's it, you're overrun. Um, they have a bunch of different versions. They have like Zombie Side in Space, they have Zombie Side. Um, I think it's called like Black Plague, which is set back in like medieval times. That's cool. So they've, there's, uh, Zombie Side is a form, you're, it's, it's works. Like it's. So you were just waiting on the Marvel Zombie one. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Yeah. So now I'm like, you know what? They got me. I think I'm in. <laughs> um, the only thing they kind of showed so far was a two foot tall zombie. That's two feet tall? Yes. <laughs> A two foot tall zombie Galactus. Which it's awesome. It looks it so cool. It looks incredible. Yeah. I don't need it. No, you do because not. Because <laughs> apparently it's a day one. You have to 
kick immediately? Yes, you have to kickstart it day one to get it. That's what they kind of implied. They've really gone into, like, prices and, like, how it's all going to work. Um, but it's a giant two-foot-tall Galactus. And, again, it looks amazing, but you don't need it. I'm telling you, people, you don't need it. <laughs> you don't. You don't need it. Because it's probably going to be $100 just for that. Are you just talking to yourself out of I it? am. Yeah, no yeah. one else is listening. You don't you need don't it. Need it. Um, it comes with Silver Surfer figure with it, I think. Um, and then today they just showed off Zombie Captain America. Yeah, he looked awesome. And I sent him to you, and he looks awesome, incredible. Yes, he does. Super detailed, like Simon. You expect from Simon. Um, so I'm excited. I'm excited to see who they zombified and who's the heroes like that are alive. Oh, yeah. I wonder if they're gonna piggyback off of What If at all. Yeah, maybe probably not and what's cool about like the zombie cap is like in the background there's like a hydra like flag and on the ground i don't know if you noticed was a uh, winter soldier's arm his bionic oh, arm was no. just on the ground that's cool so those details are going to be very cool yeah i'll, I'll be I, very I, curious i think they showed like zombie hulk too i think he's one of the oh, zombies that would be cool. which makes sense because in the old game they would have like abominations that were like big mm-hmm. they kind of had to fight so he's probably one of them so i'm curious like survivors who are they going to be? Like, maybe Spider-Man, like, I feel it's like. It's got to be Spider-Man. It's yeah. always Spider-Man. Yeah. Maybe Ant-Man's head. <laughs> yeah, floating around. <laughs> well, in the comic, who was it? It was, uh, I think it was Wasp head. Like, she oh, really? was in the, yeah, I'm pretty That's sure. Cool. On, like, Jocasta's body or something. It was something weird like that. That's getting too deep. <laughs> <laughs> Nerd stuff. Um, But that's it for our Kickstarter segment. I thought, cool. I mean, you sure you don't want to be a crow? I don't. Okay. Not now. Maybe later. Maybe yeah. later. All right. <laughs> well, that's it for that segment. Yeah. I have some fun news from uh, not news, but it's I, it's something I want to present to you. And I know after today it's gonna be gone. But uh, you know, Cards Against Humanity. Yeah. I assume, right? Yes. So every year around this time, they do the best like promotion for themselves because I think they have so much money that they're like, ah, oh, we're just gonna do whatever. So usually around this time, they'll send like an email out if you've bought from them before, which I have. I bought from them. The one year, it was all about like Hanukkah. Like it was like 12 days. They sent you like 12 gifts. Oh, that's cool. So I think you put in like 28 bucks and they sent you like 12 things. They got like Hanukkah socks. Oh. You got like <laughs> exclusive cards that were like Hanukkah for the game. Um, the one year, they they sent you, and you can bleep it out, they sent you bullshit. Really? Literal. Yes. It was literally a box. Of bullshit of manure really yes and it was amazing that's funny. <laughs> it was like five bucks that is very funny um i think it came with like one card inside for the game <laughs> but it was just a box and it, they said on the website that's it yeah. like they're like it's bs Poop. yeah it that's it like people were expecting like oh this obviously just be a joke and we're no. buying it but it literally they mailed you How in the mail that? dried that's funny manure that's actually box. really funny this year they're doing pay you black friday so instead of us having Black Friday deals, they're putting a series of different activities to get to meet us money. It's basically like a giveaway. Every four really? hours, every like couple hours they're releasing a new thing to do. That's cool. So what the heck? Yeah, so let's go through the list. If you want a hundred dollars, you get vaccinated. Okay. If you can, what if you already are? If you get vaccinated today and if you email them your proof, vax card, you get a hundred dollars. Damn. It's twelve percent full. Um, they want you to advertise their website for five dollars. That one's full, hundred percent. We want you to guess how many jelly beans we put in this Cadillac. <laughs> so they filled up a nineteen ninety three Cadillac with jelly beans, and if you can guess how many, you get ten thousand dollars. Wow. The next thousand best guesses get five dollars. It says time is up. I don't know if anyone guessed the right amount, That's but at least funny. it's too late to Oh no, they have the answer. The best guesser was Richard from Orlando, guessed 319,750 jelly beans. So I guess he won $10,000 for just guessing. <laughs> well, I would probably could figure out like the volume of the car and how. Do how would you math. figure that out? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, the next one was your Netflix password. If you emailed them your Netflix login, you got $5. That one's full. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they put the they start adding stuff. The top five dumbest passwords. Number one is fart scooter. Two horse e battery two two five eight. Three butthead fifty one. Uh, this one I can't say. <laughs> and then five is turnip. <laughs> uh, number five, which my wife was actually tempted to do. She said I could do that. What is it? 
we would like you to bake 12 identical biscuits in the shape of Paul Giamatti. <laughs> it says time is up. So I don't know if someone did How it. How much was that? $10,000. Wow. I would have done that. <laughs> that that takes a lot of work, though. Well, yeah, it's like three hours. I don't know. You got to be. Oh, someone did it. This, <laughs> this is amazing. That is awesome. <laughs> Uh, number six, we want you to give a hot dog to your mail carrier and submit a video to get five dollars. <laughs> and there's a gallery of people that did it. So, uh, the website's get five dollars dot com. I hope That's this cool. is up. That's cool. Uh, we want you to click this button a thousand times. We want you to put your cards in alphabetical order. So all your cards against humanity cards in alphabetical order. For five bucks. For five bucks, and that that takes too long. No. There's no way. Um, buried treasure, apparently. There was a link and a map of buried treasure, and someone found it. That's incredible. And it's five thousand dollars. That'd be cool to work on. Yep, this there team. they are. They unlocked it. They found the treasure. Uh, we want you to order a burrito that's just sour cream. <laughs> <laughs> and when they give you sour cream, ask for more. And when they give you more, ask for more, and say, "Please give me more. It's very important." <laughs> How much? Five bucks. So it's the burrito costs more. Yeah. Than not the, worth yeah. Uh, we want you to guess how many jelly beans we're thinking of. Just random, send them a number. Uh, apparently somebody won 551. We want you to finish our song, so I guess they sent up some lyrics, and if you were to record yourself, you got $5. We need teeth. I don't know what this means. We need a lot of teeth for something. Human teeth only. We'll pay you $5. So I don't know if people are setting in their, their kids' teeth. teeth. <laughs> we- <laughs> We want to know if you trust us. Pay us a hundred now, and we'll pay you a hundred five later. <laughs> <laughs> we want Hellman's to bring back clam onays. In 1994, Ew. Hellman's test market clamato flavored mayonnaise. Help us promote it. <laughs> you get five dollars, so we could share that on our Instagram and get five and maybe bucks. get five bucks. So, so listeners, dumb. if you randomly see us, <laughs> so dumb, shouting out clam onays, <laughs> we're trying to get money. Some of the stuff ain't working. Do you want me to keep that. going? No, that's enough. I got One it. more. One more. Pick One the best more. one. We want your belly button to recite Agent Smith's monologue from The Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Five bucks? So if you get him, you know the one he talks about, how human beings are cancer to the planet and a plague. So if you record yourself, your belly button reciting that, 84% claimed. Yeah, so we still have time. We do. Again, if you see an odd video of a belly button talking on our Instagram a week from now, you'll know why. I just okay. thought, like, every year they do this stuff. That's really and cool, I, though. It's such a cool, because they probably have so much money. Yeah. They buy, because it's such an money. easy thing. People love and, that game. And they're good because they don't sue. So all these, like, cards against Disney. other cards against Disney, cards against Harry, Harry Potter, Potter, like, yeah. they almost go, like, all right. Like, they almost sanction it because it's. Yeah, I've seen those so many times, and I like that stuff, and I've never bought it. I, I enjoy Cards Against Manny. But it gets old. Yeah. It, real quick. Again, like, a good party game, but yeah. like tw- got, after twenty minutes. Yeah, it's the audience. Like yep. you gotta be drinking, you gotta have the right you gotta have conversation in the middle of it too. Yeah. Like, yeah, I agree. But I love their marketing. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great marketing. Um that's about it. All right, well. Uh remember to rate, like us on Instagram and subscribe to the podcast. Uh leave us a review if you haven't, and if you already did, thank you so so much. But check us out at Gateway Gamers on Instagram. Mm-hmm. All right. Hope you got some deals. Yeah, hope you had a good Black Friday. Yep. So you.